I don't want this to come off as I'm trying to brag or I feel like I'm superior. That's not the point of this video. The point of this video is actually quite the opposite. I'll tell you why in a second. I've always wondered why people like me. And I know that sounds kind of stupid, but what I mean is I always wondered why it was so easy for me to get people to like me. And for a while, I really thought it was because I was always so helpful and I was always there for people coming from that like people-pleasing need in me. And I thought that was the reason why people like me. And I realized no matter how available and helpful you can be, people still might not like you. So in today's video, I wanna to talk to you guys about how you can be more likable and what the real secret is. Now, before we get started, I just wanted to welcome those of you who are new here. My name is Bridget. On this channel, you'll find me talk a lot about introverts, social anxiety, general anxiety. So if any of that interests you, make sure you go check out some of my other videos. Don't forget to like this video if you found it helpful or useful, comment below what you'd like to see more from me, and subscribe if you're not already subscribed. I may be late to this trend, but I've recently started reading Dale Carnegie's How to Win Friends and Influence People. And a lot of people say this was the book that started the whole age of self-help. And I don't know why, I've just never thought to read it. But I picked it up because honestly, I'm just super curious about people and how people think and how people work. And I kind of wanted to know what all of the hype was about. So I started reading it and a lot of the things that he talks about are really relevant today. I wanna bring up something without trying to go against the first rule that Dale will talk about in the book if you've read it, or if you haven't, I'll get into it. This whole thing that's been going on TikTok about Adam Levine and this girl, Summer Stro. I feel like it's really relevant to what I'm about to talk about. And I don't wanna be rude or criticize or talk down on any of the parties. I'm not gonna share how I feel. It's irrelevant. And the real motive behind the video is I think pretty clear, right? She was trying to do it for some kind of attention. And really just brings me to the first point of this video. How to be likable? Don't criticize, don't complain, don't talk down on others. Why would someone like you if all you're ever gonna do is criticize people and complain about things? While some may find contentment in talking about how shitty things are going or whatever, it's nice to do that once in a while if you're close with that person. But if you're sharing criticism and complaints to someone you don't know, it's really not gonna make them like you. It will probably do the opposite. I've talked about my story in a couple of other videos and I'll be linking, I guess, one of the most relevant ones up here if you guys are interested. When I was growing up, I had something called selective mutism, which is basically just a hyper manifestation of social anxiety. And I had a real phobia of speaking to people. But because of that, I relied on a lot of other senses to really help me communicate. I was a super, super observant child. And I think because of that, it's helped me along the way to become more likable. What people want from you is to be understood. And what we all crave is to be understood. So when we put that intention behind every single interaction and every single relationship to understand and then be understood, that's when it's most meaningful. And so when I go into interactions with people, when I'm interacting with relationships I already have, I'm always seeking to understand. The other part is obviously to be understood, sharing my story, my opinions, my thoughts, right? But behind that is always to understand. That is the first thing I do when I go into a conversation. A, it's what that person wants, and B, it honestly makes me feel more comfortable as someone who is socially anxious. I'm going to listen and observe and try to understand everything I can before I form an opinion, before I try to critique. So keep that in mind the next time you do go into interaction. Always seek to understand. Now going back to what I mentioned at the beginning of this video, the reason I thought that people liked me was because I was available. I was always there to listen and I was kind. And that worked for me to some degree. But when I started meeting different people in different environments, it didn't always work for me. But there are a lot of other factors when it comes to having influence over people, getting people to like you, knowing how to network. And so part of it I had for sure, but there were a lot of other things that I really didn't have and I wasn't really aware of. Getting people to like you or having influence over other people really requires you to have some sort of knowledge about yourself. And I thought I had some knowledge, but I guess like, I mean, like the, the thing that we're all always looking for is how do we know who we are? Or what's the difference between 
who we are and what we think we are. And I think I really had to bridge that gap because I thought I knew who I was, but at the same time, I didn't. And there's probably, I don't even know if this is making sense, but I needed to bridge that gap. People will like you and you can eventually have influence over people once you've done something for them. So that's part one, which I had. The other part of that is knowing who you are. People like you because of who you are. And if you don't have knowledge of who you are, if you don't know what you like, what your interests are, what your values are, it's going to be really tough for you to try to communicate those thoughts and opinions and connect with people on that. And that was the problem I started running into when I said I, I was going into these new environments and meeting new people. I had nothing to connect with them on. I, I didn't have like things that I was passionate about. So I needed to understand who the heck I was before I started trying to have influence over other people. So getting to know yourself is another huge part of this. And it was something that I was lacking for a really long time. And once I really started to investigate that and try to understand myself better, that's when I started connecting with people. That's when I saw I had influence over people. I feel like this is really evident in today's society where we're surrounded by social media and you could communicate within an instant. We see a lot of things going viral. People try to get seen and be heard. But a lot of the times those viral things, you know, they don't come off the right way. You see a lot of people criticizing them, talking negatively about them. And so there's those, those quick viral short bursts of influence that people get. And while that may be great for a couple days, a month, if you're lucky, it's not sustainable. The sustainable influence is when we get to know that person. We get to know who they are. We trust them and they have influence over us, right? Like I, I always think about the rise of Emma Chamberlain. She's super honest. She's authentic, she's vulnerable, she's relatable. She never did anything for virality. She just wanted to share her story, her life, her experiences. And while a lot of times it was nothing, I think that was, that was the whole point because so many people found that, that lifestyle that, you know, not knowing what she's doing with her life, I feel like we all can relate to that. Her journey, her growth was very authentic and very trustworthy for her fans, her followers. That kind of influence is sustainable. Like, I feel like there are not that many people that, and so when it comes to being liked, it's about gaining people's trust. It's about seeking to understand. It's about being honest, vulnerable, being generous, right? And I think these are things that we can all improve on. The internet is just getting Insane. And I feel like it really is mostly TikTok. I'm gonna go on a little tangent real quick, but it's really relevant to the message of this video. I'm looking at all these different videos. And when I was first on TikTok, I was never really going to the comments, but then, but then I started hearing people saying how funny some of the comments would always be. And when I started doing this on some videos, mostly the funny videos, I would laugh at the comments, I would enjoy the comments, so I started looking at more comments on different types of videos. And then I would see all the hate that some videos get. And it's mostly the ones that are, you know, the viral ones, that they're doing something to get attention. Others, others are totally not, but and sometimes I just was going on the comments just to see. And I'm getting to the point where I see a video and I'm almost in a way like not sure how to react. Right, like I haven't formed an opinion on this person until I go to the comments and see what, what are most of the comments saying. The point is, is that when I'm going to look at the comments, I'm always thinking in the back of my head that, oh no, these, these might be terrible. There might be a lot of people hating on this person. And usually that's what's happening. I just think that we are, we have too many opinions. We have too many complaints and too many critiques and we just need to stop. Maybe I just need to delete TikTok, but I think that that really goes to show that there is something wrong. If you get the chance to pick up Dale Carnegie's book, if you're interested in it, I think there's a lot of great things in there and it's like timeless bits of information on communication. That's all for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you found it useful as always, and I will see you next time.